This video is brought to you by my sponsor, AllisonWinePromo.com, where you can get 50% off of my favorite wines and 50% off shipping. These are high altitude wines from remote regions of Argentina, and I can finally have some of them because I recently gave birth to the latest producer to join our team. So grab a glass of AllisonWinePromo.com, toast to free speech with me, and let's get this video underway. Georgia gubernatorial candidate Stacey Abrams has been trending online because she recently said that there is no such thing as a fetal heartbeat at six weeks, and it's a manufactured sound on ultrasound so that uh, women are convinced men can take control of their bodies. Let's watch it real fast. Let's see what MSNBC says compared to Fox News Channel. And then let's go back in time a few months to NPR, which said almost exactly this, minus the men taking over women's bodies part, but basically gave Abrams her talking points, whether that's exactly where she got it, I don't know. But uh, NPR said exactly this months ago. We're going to look at that. And then I'm going to tell you a personal story, uh, my journey on this particular issue. So let's watch this real fast. There is no such thing as a heartbeat in six weeks. It is a manufactured sound designed to convince people that men have the right to take control of a woman's body away from her. Not surprisingly, it has been framed by several outlets, uh, corporate news outlets, as a left versus right issue. This article, one of several of those from Fox News Channel headlines, uh, Twitter users baffled after Stacey Abrams claims no fetal heartbeat at six weeks, quote, wild conspiracy theory. Abrams was called deranged and a science denier for her comments. They basically compile several conservative commentators and what they wrote, like Liz Wheeler, what? Ha ha. Manufactured by whom? Does she think some doctor is hiding behind the Doppler beatboxing into a microphone in perfect imitation of a heartbeat? Stacey Abrams is so deranged. Now, if you go to MSNBC, not surprisingly, uh, they're blaming this on the right. Uh, how the far right soft on the facts, strong on the emotional overlay milieu nurtures policies that are both dangerous and ludicrous. And the main headline at the top, as you see, is the fetal heartbeat isn't real, at least not in the way you think. Since I'm not a doctor and not a scientist, but I am somebody who used to work in corporate news, I was interested to see the evolution of these talking points and how Stacey Abrams may have come to this conclusion. Like, is she really deranged? Is she, is she just somebody who's just totally insane and she came up with this on her own? If you go back a few months to NPR, this article essentially is what she said. So you do with that what you will. I'm giving you the sort of media background on this. Did she read this article and that's where she got these ideas? I don't know if she got them from somewhere else, but this NPR article is essentially what she says, minus minus the whole that the, the, the sound is man's attempt to take over women's bodies, okay? But but the rest of the, the stuff about the manufactured sound and whatnot, it's in this article. It Would it be... Would it be a wild conspiracy theory to assume that Stacey Abrams listens and reads NPR? <laughs> Probably not. I would say she she has a high, highly likely uh, an audience member of NPR. And as you see from their headline, this is May 2022, so you know, a few months ago. The Texas abortion ban hinges on, quote, fetal heartbeat. Doctors call that misleading. Now, if you've been following my channel for five seconds, you know that one of the things that bothers me is the most is when when uh, news outlets just say doctors say or experts say scientists say it, it's something that often occurs in the language used by the corporate news outlets and and you know alternative news outlets do the same thing trying to make their point they don't offer the variety of thought opinion dissent from mainstream narratives. They just tell you that doctors call that. So, so it gives you this false impression that all doctors call that misleading, which is just factually inaccurate. So let, let's just look at this real fast. I'm not going to read you the whole article, but I mean, you tell me, is this, this right under here, right under the picture, okay? Does this sound like what Stacey Abrams said? The term fetal heartbeat is used or as used in the anti-abortion law in Texas is misleading and not based on science, say physicians who specialize in reproductive health. Now, once again, they're saying that physicians who specialize in reproductive health say this. That's also just not true. I've heard many 
physicians <laughs> who specialize in reproductive health say the opposite that that uh they they interpret cardiovascular activity early on as early as like three to four weeks i will show you something in a second from the mayo clinic um you know as as basically the heartbeat and that's that's the the beginning of it all uh, so to just say that physicians who specialize in reproductive health all agree with this interpretation is just wrong uh, continuing on, what the ultrasound machine detects in an embryo at six weeks of pregnancy is actually just, like minimizing it, electrical activity from cells that aren't yet a heart. And the sound that you hear is actually manufactured by the ultrasound machine. That sounds exactly like what she said. I'll just read it one more time. What the ultrasound machine detects in an embryo at six weeks of pregnancy is actually just electrical activity from cells that aren't yet a heart. And the sound that you hear is actually manufactured by the ultrasound machine. So, uh, and actually it says they're republishing the story after the news site Political published a leaked draft opinion suggesting the U.S. Supreme Court intends to overturn Roe v. Wade. So they republished it. I looked it up and it appears the original article was released in September of 2021. So really over a year before Stacey Abrams said this, you're reading this in, in NPR and NPR is creating this narrative that doctors call it this physicians who specialize in obstetric care agree about this. And they, they all think this, and this, this is one of the reasons why I chose to talk about this is because it, it's a, a real, it is a real problem. <laughs> problem is an understatement in modern journalism and maybe this goes back decades but at least in what i'm seeing nowadays and and i'll be the first one to say like i you know i'm guilty of this before i started to realize how problematic writing this way was and before i was aware of the dissent amongst uh, among uh, the experts in some of the fields i covered i'm sure i wrote this kind of stuff that's why i talk about it now because i if there's somebody out there like me who would listen and be like oh maybe i should I should write it to say some doctors say or these doctors say so that at least at least the 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 debate about a particular topic takes into account the variety of of thought that's out there. This is from the Mayo Clinic and uh, it's a slide ultrasound slide of a baby's heart. It does say that it's an image usually taken during a standard ultrasound between 18 and 20 weeks, but a baby's cardiovascular system begins developing five weeks into pregnancy or three weeks after conception. The heart starts to beat shortly afterward. So again, why talk about this? Because everyone's pointing fingers at Stacey Abrams, but you have you have a news outlet that basically said exactly that a year ago. And a lot more people than Stacey Abrams read that and probably think exactly the way she does. And then you see like MSNBC calling it a far right wing conspiracy. And you look at Fox News Channel and they just point fingers at Stacey Abrams as if it's just Stacey Abrams saying this. And 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 yet NPR wrote an article like NPR, you know, they purport themselves to be this objective news outlet, which we all know is is uh, not true. Well, maybe we don't all know that. Obviously, there are lots of people who think NPR is great, uh, you know, and you can get some good stuff out of NPR. Okay. But they're, they're definitely biased. It's no, no question. But, but I just want to, to point everybody's attention to the fact that what she said while trending right now, and everyone is uh, wild, wild up in arms about it, whether you agree or disagree with her, it was, uh, it was written down as journalism by NPR, not an opinion. And uh, it was, it was written as if, there were um, there were there were just all doctors in agreement about this particular topic. So now to my personal story. First, let's go back to the NPR article where they quote somebody named uh, Dr. Jennifer Kearns uh, right here talking about why the term fetal heartbeat is pretty misleading. She's an OBGYN and associate professor at the University of California, San Francisco. And uh, if we scroll all the way down here, this is uh, one of the quotes they have. There is nothing specific and meaningful and relevant about the detection of cardiac activity at this gestation that implies anything that's relevant for women's health or for pregnancy, says Kearns. It is one indicator 
that's a baby you hear during this. It is one indicator among many indicators that a pregnancy may or may not be progressing with some expected milestones. Uh, my newborn producer is actually in the background has something to say about this, but let's just read it one more time. There is nothing specific and meaningful and relevant about the detection of cardiac activity at this gestation that implies anything that's relevant for women's health or for pregnancies, says Kearns. This is an OBGYN, okay, and a professor. And it is totally bewildering to hear an OBGYN say that there is nothing meaningful or relevant about cardiac activity at that stage of gestation. Uh, over a year ago, a little over a year ago, we actually found out that we were having a baby and I was five weeks pregnant, three weeks post conception. And I was at the doctor for something totally different, but this particular doctor had OBGYN training and an ultrasound machine. And she asked me if I wanted to see the baby and I said, yes. And so she, uh, hooked up the ultrasound machine and I saw that cardiac activity or heartbeat or whatever you want to call it. I saw that there on the machine. I saw it. I saw it moving. And several weeks later, you know, after she sent us home with a picture, uh, which I sent to my husband to show him, um, that, that told her that I was in fact pregnant and I had a, I had a viable pregnancy. I had a, a growing, uh, embryo in, in my uterus. Uh, several weeks later we went in for the first trimester ultrasound and that's usually when they give you the due date and they just check to make sure that everything's moving along as it should. And it was that cardiac activity that they could no longer detect. And that's when they told us that I had had a miscarriage and that I had to have surgery. Whatever you want to call it, it was the defining, it was the defining characteristic for the doctors to determine whether I was pregnant, whether I had a baby growing inside of me, was that cardiac activity. They, they saw it at five weeks and she sent us home with a picture and said, congratulations. They did not see it at 11 and a half weeks and said, we're very sorry, but uh, your baby is no longer alive and you have to have surgery. That was the defining characteristic. The reason I'm I'm doing this video and the reason I'm even telling the story, which really is is uh, not easy to tell, is because number one, I think it's important, regardless what you're calling whatever nowadays in an era where we are honestly redefining terms left and right, economic terms, scientific terms. Um, it's it's important to I guess understand what they they mean regardless. And, uh, what this means, you know, what this means, what we're talking about, we're debating about whether, you know, you agree with Stacey Abrams or you don't, uh, is the determination for the doctor, uh, about whether, you know, your pregnancy is continuing. And, uh, in my particular case, uh, it was one of the hardest things ever to learn, uh, that we had lost our child. Um, and that was exactly what signified that uh, that it in fact happened was a loss of that cardiac activity. So that's that's the relevance of it. Just to go back to the quote from that OBGYN, that is the relevance and and the meaning. OK, so when they say there's nothing meaningful or relevant, that's just that's just so that's so inaccurate for for the family, for the baby, um, and for the doctor, frankly, because it is significant and relevant, uh, as you know, as, as it was in my particular case. Uh, finally, I wanted to do this video because, like I said, you know, it's, it's blowing up online with fingers pointed at Stacey Abrams, but I just showed you an NPR article which predates what she said by about a year, and it, it basically says what she said. And it says that doctors say it, that doctors say this, not just some doctors, not just these doctors, but doctors, doctors say this. And since I do media analysis, I want to just flag that again, because um, doctors don't just say this. Uh, doctors, doctors disagree and agree on this topic and many other topics, uh, depending on, you know, where they fall. Uh, and their interpretation of 
what they see. You know, ultimately they're humans and and they they have different interpretations. And I think it's important if you're going to do real journalism to share that this is not a monolithic set of opinions or interpretations of scientific data. So let me know what you think in the comment section. As usual, don't forget that if you want to support my work and get exclusive content as well as updates on our family and what we're up to. Now we are uh, blessed to have a second producer here and I talk about, for instance, my crazy birth experience recently in Northeast Oregon after hiking. That's right. Exactly. He's got a lot to say. He's talkative. I don't know where he gets it from, but if you go to alisonmorrow.locals.com, then you'll get all of that. So go over, join my editorial board, and I will see you next time.